Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about our three systems in the North Atlantic. We have Tropical Storm Ida, which is going to be the main treat of this video. And we also have Invests 97 and 98L, which still have chances to develop into tropical cyclones. And so before I go into details... Okay, so first up, let us talk about our two invests. So first up is Invest 98L. And so as you're seeing on the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, it is given a high 80% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. So it is possible that by this weekend, we could have this becoming a tropical depression, probably a tropical storm. And so the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Julian. And so if this develops, it will acquire the name Julian. And fortunately, it is expected to mainly move northward and turn out to sea so not expected to be a threat to land during the next couple of days and so let's move on to invest 97l so the chance for this one was much higher and now it has decreased down to 60 percent so conditions are only marginally conducive to enable this to develop into a tropical cyclone and so it is possible that we could still have a tropical depression or probably a weak tropical storm developing from this area of low pressure but it is going to be accelerating into less favorable conditions especially in terms of the ocean temperatures so that is going to be the inhibiting factor once the system is going to be making its way more northward so it has very limited time and a marginally conducive environment that is going to be enabled to intensify so we'll have to wait and see what is going to be the outcome of the system but development is getting less likely for it so it's likely that only 90 8L will be the one developing into a tropical depression by this weekend and probably achieving tropical storm status. And so now let's move on to tropical storm Ida. So let's take a look at it on satellite view. And so we're seeing here that the storm is getting more compact. We have that area of very, very deep convection and the system is looking quite well right now. And uh, at this time it is located over, over the northwestern Caribbean and it is en route to the Gulf of Mexico so we have the shower and thunderstorm activity that is associated with the tropical cyclone being a bit widespread section sections of Jamaica especially the eastern sections as of right now are probably experiencing some rainfall from this and so the island could still experience some spots of shower and thunderstorm activity as we head throughout the rest of today but as time goes by conditions are expected to improve but we have a hurricane warning that is in place for parts of cuba along with a tropical storm warning and sections of the gulf coast are under a hurricane watch so let's go on to the cone forecast from the national hurricane center Okay, and so we're seeing here that Ida has winds of 65 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the northwest at 15 miles per hour. So as of right now, it is expected to become a hurricane by later today. And when it enters the Gulf of Mexico and is making its way towards the Gulf Coast of the US, we are expecting rapid intensification and Ida is expected to have monstrous winds going at 120 miles per hour at the time of landfall. And let me tell you this, guys even though this is what is anticipated as of right now i think that ida will be much stronger than what is initially anticipated and so as time goes by we're seeing an increase in the expected intensity of the system at the time of landfall here and so this is the time of year when we have systems making their way into the gulf of mexico and rapidly developing uh, becoming some of the strongest and devastating systems of the season so if you are in louisiana mississippi even alabama i would say as far as tennessee please take the necessary precautions and stay safe but southeastern louisiana is expected to be the area that is going to be experiencing the worst of ida and so what you are seeing in red is a hurricane warning that is currently in place for the cuban provinces of pinar del rio and artemisa and the isle of youth and we also have a hurricane watch which is highlighted in pink being in effect for cameron louisiana to the mississippi alabama border and also for lake pontchartrain lake marpas and metropolitan new orleans and so tropical storm warning which is highlighted in blue is in effect for little cayman and cayman brack as well as the Cuban provinces of Matanzas, Mayabeque, and Havana. And there is a tropical storm watch, which is highlighted in yellow, that is in effect for the Mississippi-Alabama border to the Alabama-Florida border. So those areas, all of those areas that I just told you guys about, are expected to 
experience some very life-threatening conditions as a result of Ida as it's going to be making its way by and so this system here could be something very very significant I would not be surprised if the system manages to make landfall as even a category for hurricane so again guys if you're in southeastern Louisiana please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe and so let's take a look at the rainfall potential map so this is for the US and the different colors here show different amounts of rainfall anticipated so we have have the light green meaning one inch the darker green two inches the yellow four inches the orange six inches the red 10 inches and the pink 15 inches of rain so we see that it's mainly southeastern louisiana and the southern sections of mississippi and alabama that are expected to experience the worst of the rainfall from Ida. but even though they're going to be up to 10 inches of rainfall that rainfall is going to be quite widespread so we're seeing that even though landfall is anticipated in southeastern louisiana surrounding areas are still expected to experience some dangerous conditions so the main concern with any tropical cyclone is usually the water but now it's going to be the wind and the water especially with the potential devastating uh, intensity that is expected of Ida and so let's go on and take a look at conditions that are persistent across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico so first up the ocean temperature map and so we're seeing here that the northwestern Caribbean is very favorable so these very warm ocean waters along with little Saharan dust interfering and conducive shear are what are going to be enabling the system to continue intensifying and and then by later today, Ida is likely to become a hurricane. And take a look just off Louisiana, 31 degrees Celsius. So these are the ocean temperatures that are really going to be fueling Ida as it makes its way toward the Gulf Coast of the U.S. Very, very warm ocean waters. And so now let's go on to the wind shear map. So we're seeing here that uh, the wind shear is not the very best right now in the region where Ida is. But it is going to get increasingly favorable as the system accelerates into the Gulf of Mexico. So we have a bit of shear setting into the vicinity of the storm, but over in the Gulf of Mexico, we see that this shear is a lot more conducive. And to know that, we know by the different colors. So the green means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. So when you see a lot of those reds setting in, the environment is a bit hostile for any tropical cyclones to intensify much because that is what usually rips them up, guys. So again, guys, it could be one for the record books, and we definitely just have to keep watching this system and i cannot emphasize enough on preparing for the system as it could be something very very catastrophic uh and this is bringing back memories of what happened with laura so we've seen a lot of systems that have recently rapidly intensified in the gulf of mexico the most recent one being grace which was just over a week ago i think and so grace made landfall as a cat three almost a cat four in mexico and it had very little time there so if it had more time over those warm ocean waters at that time then we would have had grace achieving category four status at the time of landfall so we could see this this is most likely going to be the outcome with ida so again if you're along the gulf coast of the u.s please take necessary precautions and stay safe if you're in portions of western cuba you are either under hurricane warning or tropical storm warning as i is going to be making its way by so guys please stay safe and this is not the end of it we're now heading into the peak of the season where we're going to see more and more activity taking place and so i will keep you updated as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weatherwise